it's me, Sweetie, and thank you for being here for another video. So you guys have been requesting another one of these behind the brand videos like crazy. Thank you so much for the feedback. I love hearing and knowing about what you would like to see me make. So I'm very excited to bring another episode in the series to you guys today. I really have a lot of fun putting these videos together and doing the research and learning about the brands to share it with you guys. So I will definitely have more in the series. Definitely stick around for that. The previous episode in the series was about Baby the Star Shine Bright, and I will link that up above. And if you like this video while you're watching, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you do want to stick around for the rest of the series, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. So if you somehow didn't already read the title, hopefully my dress that I'm wearing today will give you a little bit of a clue as to what brand we're doing. But in today's Behind the Brand series, we are covering Metamorphose. Well, I'm sure you all are excited to get on with the series, so let's just jump right into some Lolita history. The Metamorphose brand that we know and love today was founded by a woman named Kuniko Kato in the year 1997. But I do want to go back a little bit further just to talk a little more about Kato's experience before she became the designer of Metamorphose. Now, in my research for the previous video I did about Baby the Star Shine Bright, I found that many of their designers knew from a very young age, even childhood, that they wanted to design clothes, even specifically Lolita. But that is not the case for Kato. Kato actually considered many different career paths before she settled on going into fashion business. For a while, she pursued being a writer, writing scripts for theatrical performances, and she was even in a band for a time. But she quickly realized that being in the band wasn't going to pay her bills, and she needed to pursue a career. And at that point, she considered being a chef or a beautician, but did finally settle on going into fashion business. And so she pursued her education at Osaka Mode Gakuen, which is one of Japan's largest vocational schools. Now, considering how hard it was for her to settle on even just a career, it was also difficult for her to settle on what kind of clothes to design. However, she found her inspiration for designing Lolita dresses by enjoying perusing all of the small little trendy shops in Harajuku. Ones she particularly enjoyed and drew inspiration from were little shops that contained Western style fashions or things that weren't necessarily trendy, but that gave her a warm feeling in her heart and made her happy. And so she decided then that in her fashion school submissions, she would submit nothing else besides Lolita fashion. Now, the teachers at the school really weren't accepting of her designs in Lolita fashion at first. The school wanted her to focus more on designs that were in style and trendy and would sell, but she really put her foot down and refused to make any changes to her design submissions. In the end, her teachers did decide to recognize and accept her Lolita design passion, and her fellow classmates really enjoyed her designs and supported her as well. It was at this time, in 1993, that the very first Metamorphose pieces were sold in local stores on consignment. But the brand was not even called Metamorphose at this time, it in fact had a much longer name. The full name that the brand started out as was Manifestiange Metamorphose Tant de Fille. I will have you know that I had to listen to the lady on Google pronounce all that for me several times. Now, if you're like me and you know nothing about the French language, I do need to tell you that this name for the brand is quite nonsensical in French. While the name is nonsensical to the French language, it is thought that manifestiange comes from the word manifestation or to manifest, and metamorphose from the word metamorphosis, which means to go through a great change. The brand actually went through several legal name changes over the years, but I think now it is simply filed as metamorphose and most commonly referred to as meta among Lolitas. So it was after her graduation in 2007 that Kato officially founded Metamorphose with the company's current director, Matsuoka. They set up shop in Kyoto, but the next year, in 1998, they moved to Osaka and opened their first retail location. And with the success that they garnered from this original Osaka location, they were actually able to open two new locations in 1999, one in Nagoya and one in Tokyo. That same year, they also opened their online shop for Japan. Now, things seem to be moving very successfully very quickly because in 2002, they were able to open their English website. Now, Metamorphose has been known as one of the most accessible Lolita brands for foreigners and especially Westerners with the launch of this English website. 
Unlike many other Lolita brands, they also accepted PayPal as a form of payment, and they shipped overseas without the use of a shopping service. So while you can purchase Metamorphose directly from their English-translated website, there are unfortunately no locations physically in the U.S. However, if you do want to shop their pieces in a physical store, there is a retail location near Houston called Kuroshiro Kawaii, which stocks Metamorphose pieces. And they have a website as well. 2002 was quite a big year for Metamorphose, as they also created a new internal secondary label for their brand called Crown Label. Crown Label only made releases about twice a year, but they were able to do so at a less expensive price than the main collection, which usually sell for about 20,000 to 40,000 yen. Moving right into 2004, the brand gained a little more international recognition after being featured in an episode of America's Next Top Model. I actually had no idea about this. I was shocked. I remember watching this season very closely, and of course at the time I had no idea what Lolita was. In the episode, the final four girls, I believe, traveled to Tokyo to learn about Harajuku fashion. Of course, they were very rude and unaccepting of the styles that were being featured in Harajuku, so it wasn't nice to watch their reactions, but it was really cool and fun to see Metamorphose featured in such a popular American show. You can find the episode floating around on YouTube or online many different places. I recommend watching it. It is very interesting. And then sadly, in 2009, Kato ended up leaving the brand, but she did go and start her own indie brand called Physical Drop. Now, I'm not sure why exactly she left. I don't know if it was on her terms or if there was some kind of takeover of the company, but I do know that during the time that she left, their crown label pieces disappeared from the market from about 2007 to 2008. Then in 2009, it came back as a specifically sweet Lolita line within their collection, with no mention of the previous crown label that even existed. Now, getting up to speed in current times, I really couldn't find much accessible information about what the design team looks like right now, what their corporate structure looks like, but I did find a single article which was published in 2018 that gives a little bit of insight. Metamorphose had a presence at a Russian anime or fashion convention, I believe, and one of their designers was present to do a little interview. The Metamorphose representative is named Natsumi, and she advised that the current design team consists of six people. So thank you to the six designers at Metamorphose who do lovely work. Now, while Kato was with Metamorphose, she did do quite a few interviews, and she stated that her concept for the brand was anything goes. Because while she really loved Lolita fashion, she also had an interest in all different kinds of fashion and wanted to incorporate all those little details into her brand. Now because of this, many of Metamorphose's designs can be seen as imaginative and untraditional. Some in the Lolita community might call them tacky or ugly or not Lolita, but no matter what you think, you do have to recognize that they are very unique. While the Metamorphose designs do represent the classic Lolita substyles of classic sweet and goth, they do also represent more niche styles like Wa Lolita. This dress that I'm wearing today, which is called Dozing Cat, is actually part of their Wa Lolita collection. Now you'll see it in more of the JSK than the one piece I'm wearing, but Wa Lolita focuses on incorporating aspects from Japanese kimono into the Lolita fashion. To achieve this, they use more Japanese textile patterns and subtle design aspects. And something I and the Lolita community at large really appreciate about Metamorphose is their size inclusivity. Now, this could be due to the fact that Kato herself could be considered plus size in Japanese culture, but either way, we love it, we appreciate it, and more Lolita brands should follow their lead. I'm unsure if this has always been the case for Metamorphose, but as long as I've been aware of the brand, they have carried three different size options for each of their dress releases. The only other brand I've seen do something similar to this is Hey Newly, which is ceased operation, unfortunately. So if you happen to know of any Lolita brands, big or indie, that do offer far more inclusive size options, let me know down below in the comments. Metamorphose's website states, Almost everyone has the desire to transform oneself, be it into an angel, someone who is more elegant, or even back to the time that they were a little girl. With this concept in mind, we created the Metamorphose brand. In order to assist you in your transformation, while not being a slave to the current fashion, we continue to conceive cute EGL fashion. 
I think that is a perfect representation of the brand that Metamorphos is today and has always been. I think it really represents Kato's fighting spirit to continue to submit her designs and to continue to design things that she really loved and gave her a warm feeling in her heart no matter what anyone else thought. Metamorphos definitely does have some interesting designs that really break down the barriers of what people probably think Lolita has to consist of, and I really admire that. I especially love their Wallolita designs. They can be a little bit intimidating to cord, but if you've never tried it yourself, maybe go check out some of their online stock and get some inspiration. I myself only have one dress from Metamorphos, so maybe I need to go check out their website too. I know for so many of you, Metamorphos is your favorite brand, so I hope you enjoyed my little historical coverage in this video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give me a thumbs up down below. I really appreciate it. Well, that will conclude today's little Lolita history lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll stick around for more to come in the series. If there is a brand you would love for me to do next, definitely let me know down below in the comments. I always appreciate your feedback. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here, guys. Thank you so much for spending some time with me on my channel today. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my day. I hope you enjoy yours as well, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!